All right, in this video, I just want to do another example of using the second part of the fundamental theorem to, to do some analysis on typical type of problems that you would come across if you're taking the AP exam. So we have here this function, lowercase f, and then we've got this function g of x, which is an integral function that relates to, to f. Now, the first thing I want you to do if you're looking at this and you don't have the numbers that I put in, is to put those numbers in. It'll just make it so much easier for us to, to analyze. So I put, I'm just pretending that area is one, this area down here is three, four, five, six. Let's just put those in because it'll, it'll help us. Okay, so this question says, at what values of x do the local max and local minimum of g occur? And again, g is the integral function here that accumulates area from zero to x under the um, the function f. So again, a key concept in calculus is that local maxes and mins occur at endpoints, endpoints and critical points. So um, I think the way I'm going to organize this info is I'm going to make a a g prime number line. So in other words, I'm going to basically use the first derivative test. So our domain starts at 0, it ends at 9. And um, all right, so now again, I'm analyzing g, right? So I need a g prime number line. And so what I need to put in here on here are the critical points. So our critical points, again, in this case, are going to be when our derivative is equal to 0. So g of x has a derivative has its derivative equal to by the fundamental theorem f of x so g prime of x is f of x by the second part of the fundamental theorem so this is equal to zero well let's we'll just go look at our graph it equals zero at one three five seven and nine although that's an endpoint so we've got a lot of critical points here one three five seven and I'll leave 9 out. Okay, so I'll put those on our number line. 1, 3, 5, and 7. So um, now let's check the regions in between. Between 0 and 1, the right g prime, which is f, is positive. Right. So I'm looking at this section here. That's positive. I'm not going to color code every section. but So that's positive. So that must mean g is increasing. And I'll write that here. And then between um, 1 and 3, the derivative is negative. <clears throat> so it's decreasing. And then between 3 and 5, it's positive again. So it's increasing. Between 5 and 7, it's negative. So it's decreasing. Between 7 and 9, it's positive. So it's increasing. Okay, and so by the first derivative test, when the first derivative changes from positive to negative, we have a max. So I have a max here. Um, I have a max here. And then at an endpoint, if your derivative is positive and then positive to the um, left of a right endpoint, that means the graph rises and then stops. So we have a local max here too. Um, whereas we have mins in the other at the other critical points, right? So we have a min where the derivative changes sign from negative to positive. So I have mins there and there, and then I have a min here at zero. Okay, so we will say, now there's kind of a lot, I mean, we have a lot of um, local mins and maxes. So let's say local mins at x equals, so we've got zero and uh, three, and 7, and I'm just going to say by the first derivative test, okay, I mean, you could say, if you wanted to write it out more plainly, you would say, because the derivative changes from neg uh, negative to positive. Let me just put that in parentheses. Uh, G prime changes from negative to positive. Okay, or um, 
is positive 2 to the uh, right of an endpoint. Okay, and so then we have our local maxes at, so our local max is at x equal to 1, 1, uh, 5, and 9, again by the first derivative test. Okay, so I'll just... Again, to be, to be, I guess, consistent, right? So G prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, or is positive to the to the left of a right endpoint. Okay, um, so that's a good justification. So then it says, where does G attain its absolute maximum value? Well, let's, uh, this is why I had us put in those values. Let's, um, let's evaluate the function G at those, the, the maxes. So, or the X values that correspond to the max. So we wanna evaluate G of one. We want to evaluate g of 5, and we want to evaluate g of 9. And we do that by looking up at our function. So g of 1 would be the integral from 0 to 1. OK, so from 0 to 1 is just 1. The integral, so g of 5 would be the integral from 0 to 5. Okay, so that will be 1 minus 2 plus, sorry, 1 minus 3 plus 4, right? So that's uh, 2. And then g of 9 would be the integral from 0 to 9. And that's going to be 1 plus... Uh, 1 minus 3 plus, plus uh, 4 minus 5 plus 6. And in the end, that's uh, 10 minus 8. So I think that's 3. Okay, so the absolute maximum value uh, is 3, and it occurs um, at x equals equals 9, which is the endpoint. Okay, so notice the question says, where does it attain it? Okay, and then the last question, at what approximate intervals is g concave downward? Well, a function is concave down when the second derivative is, so this is going to occur when the second derivative is, is negative. So we've got to take the derivative of the derivative. So go back up here. We know that g prime is equal to f. Therefore, g pro double prime is equal to f prime. And we can analyze, maybe making a second derivative number line. OK, g double prime. So let's analyze where the second derivative is equal to 0. So Again, this is also f prime of x. When does that equal 0? Well, here, now that we're looking at f prime, we're looking for where we have horizontal tangents, right? So basically, maxes and mins on this graph, OK? So that's going to happen at, looks like, I mean, we have to approximate, I guess. Let's say this is a half, right? So there's one place where f prime is 0. Let's just call this 2. Let's call this 4, let's call this 6, and let's call this 8. All of those places 
are where f prime or g double prime is zero. So we'll put a half, we'll put uh, three, we'll put, sorry, we'll put two. And we'll put four and six and eight. This one's kind of obnoxious because there's so many there's so many turning points. So just bear in mind they probably won't always be this. They won't have this many. Um, okay, so the so but then our first derivative is what in between zero and a half. Well, the graph's increasing, right? The graph's increasing, so first derivative is positive. Okay, so I'm going to put positive, and I'm pretty sure. So if it's positive, that means that our graph is concave up. Okay, g double uh, g of x is concave up. And then it switches to decreasing, so it's going to be concave down. And I'm just going to kind of look at the graph and, and switch. It just alternates, right? So from two, um, 2 to 4, it's positive. From 4 to 6, it's uh, negative again. From 6 to 8, it's positive. And then it's a negative. So it just keeps switching. And what these symbols mean now is that our function g is concave up, then it's concave down, then it's concave up. It's concave down, concave up, concave down. So concave down on the intervals that I'm highlighting here, right? That's where the second derivative is negative. So it's concave down, we'll say from 1 half to 2, and then from 4 to 6, and then from 8 to 9. So that it's a kind of a good representative problem of the type that gets put on the AP exams. It, it probably wouldn't be this. You wouldn't have that many critical points or anything like that. Um, but it kind of gives you the idea, like we, we're using our same principles, just using the fundamental theorem now, right? I didn't really say a, I didn't say a ton about area in this because we're just thinking of this g as a function who has a derivative, so we can apply the um, basically all the concepts that we've learned.